previously on Exit Strategy, we found out what comedians would do with their lives if they no longer did comedy. And that's what's going to happen this week, too, folks. Welcome to Exit Strategy for yet another week. It's Wednesday, and Wednesday is Exit Strategy Day. Don't forget it. You don't. You already knew that. You're a subscriber. Oh, hey, maybe you're not a subscriber. Maybe you're brand new. Maybe you're, this is your first time listening to the podcast. If so, welcome. There's a whole lot of other episodes you could definitely listen to after this one. Guess what? You just found your new favorite pod. Nah, I don't want to be that cocky. I, I don't want to be that guy. You found your. You just found your new favorite podcast. Because this might not be your favorite podcast, but it might end up. This is this is the scenario that it will happen. This is what this is how I envision you, the listener, who is a first timer to this podcast, because we have a wonderful guest, and I'm glad to have her. More on that later. You're thinking, you know, I got this Wednesday podcast, and like I I download it, but I I don't usually even listen to it, and when I do, it's because the other ones that I have aren't like. I went through them, or like I didn't really like the guest on that one. You know, let's throw a new Wednesday podcast in the rotation. Well, this could be that podcast. It's Exit Strategy. I invite funny people onto the show and ask them, you know, you're funny for a living. You're funny most of your time. What if you had to direct those energies, those comedic energies and performing energies into something completely different? What's another facet of your life you would explore? And we find out their personality through their answer. And it's a fascinating listen. At least I think so. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you can find out more about the podcast uh, all throughout the internet. We have a Twitter. It's at Exit Strategy Pod. You send me an email, exitstrategypod at gmail.com. If you have any questions or concerns, hey, maybe we could, if enough people send questions or comments, we could have a, a mailbag episode. Every show needs a mailbag episode. Uh, that's something you could contribute to. And also, uh, while I'm on the subject, you know, it's been a while since we've had uh, an iTunes rating number change. So if, you're, if you've been on the fence, if you're like, I don't know if I'm ready to fully commit to a star rating score on this show yet, get off the fence. Give us a review. Give us a rating. It would really help the podcast. It actually does help the podcast because there's all these, like, business it's finally time to sell your business and get out of the entrepreneurial world. And this is, is edition of The Boring Exit Strategy on iTunes. See, I'm falling behind all these business podcasts. Who's listening to these business podcasts? Rich people. And we can't have that. My apologies to rich people listening. Uh, but this is a class war, and I'm starting it now. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's get on a more pleasant subject. Today I have on the podcast... Uh, comedian, fellow Leo, and uh, friend, Rhea Butcher. You probably know Rhea Butcher uh, from her appearances on uh, the Conan O'Brien show. You might have heard her podcast, Put Your Hands Together, that she uh, hosts with her wife, Cameron Esposito. You might have seen those two people on the CISO show, Take My Wife. And uh, good for you. You're, on, you're ahead of the curve. Uh, Rhea's great. Rhea's the best. I love talking to Rhea. Uh, she just got back from touring. She's about to go back on another tour. But in that window of time, I got to have her sit down here at my house. And we had a wonderful chat, had a lot of fun talking to her. And you're about to listen to that. Rhea's had a very successful year. But we're going to find out what she would do with her life if she did not do comedy. Right after this on Exit Strategy. And you know what else I don't understand? Uh, when when comics do uh, like Conan sets mm -hmm. and they don't have a mic at all. I know. That is they ask you if you want a mic or don't want a mic, and I'm always like, who doesn't have a mic? <laughs> Can I say, uh, <laughs> to start off, happy birthday. Oh, happy thank you. I was going to say, birthday. Jeff, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we have a pair of August 12th birthdays mm -hmm. Best every birthday year. in town. And I think that uh, we're now kindred spirits forever. Wait, oh, absolutely. Have we ever established if it is... The same year. I I think we had a Facebook chat about it a while ago, but I think we need to re-up re that conversation. I'm, I'm 83. I'm 82. Okay, so you, I, yeah. we, I waited Did we a talk year. about days? So you were born on Friday, right? Well, that I can't tell you. You can't tell me because you don't know, or you can't tell me because you can't tell me? 
That would be weird if I'm like, I cannot tell you what day, August 12th, <laughs> 1983 was. I can't get into it, but I cannot tell you that. No, I I, um, I don't know, actually. You know why I know? Because what? I was born on a Thursday, and I almost was born on Friday the 13th. Oh, that would have been sick. And uh, Alfred Hitchcock was born on Friday the 13th. August 13th, a Friday. So you shouldn't know August 13th facts. You I should shouldn't, only know except August I was facts. trying to come up with material uh, <laughs> and the fact uh, that my birthday's uh, Thursday, August 12th, which is almost Friday the 13th, because I feel like I have half bad luck. It's almost bad luck. Partial, yeah, just <laughs> kind of just a toe a under a bad set. Just a bad luck. Just a sconch. And it, the, the good <laughs> thing about the August 12th birthday, I haven't checked it in a while, but mm-hmm. I don't think anyone notable... Truly notable has been born on that day. No, there is uh, someone that is awful. That was born oh, on who that. is it? Casey Affleck has that birthday. Oh, Pete Sampras, I think. How did I not know that Casey Affleck shares a birthday with us? I don't. I I remember seeing that when he was first, like you know, the second Affleck or yeah. whatever, and being like, man, who cares? And then <laughs> forgot about it, and then was like, God That's damn it! True. <laughs> yeah, that had to have been a while there where I stopped checking for what celebrities' birthdays. Sure, right, yeah. birthday. And all of a sudden, it will be just children, it you know, famous children, and we're like, oh great, not. So there will be another one, but it I is think... a popular birthday, though. Did you know this, Jeff? Well, because it would have be been like a, like a day. New Year's Valentine Day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Wait. Right? No. Well, no, it would be Christmas. It's, yeah, it's Christmas baby. It's a Christmas yeah. baby. Gross. Our parents gross. are gross. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it there just for a second, and then I'm like, oh, now I know. Now I'm I like, have to think about it. Oh, that's it. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it, came, it came to me what I was actually talking about there. Uh, well, happy birthday happy to birthday, you. Happy birthday, Jeff. And uh, a happy uh, future birthday. Happy future birthday to you as well. <laughs> I'm glad you got here. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to talk to you. Uh, you've been Likewise. very busy this mm-hmm. past winter. Yeah. I think when I initially uh, tried to get you over here, you mm-hmm. were like just coming off of the big tour. Yeah. I I think we were talking right before I went on, and I was like, I can't. I was going to try to... I always have this tendency to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can do all of it. And then I'm like, why am I so tired? It's yeah. stressed out all the time. Oh, it's because I'm the time. trying to jam everything into like a, a two-day window. Um, but yeah, and then I went on a 20 city bus tour, Ooh, 17 yeah. cities were in the bus, three cities were by plane because it just didn't work. Not a biplane, but by a Not plane. The, the bus didn't work? Well, it just, the routing didn't work oh, because we, <laughs> right, the bus broke down and then we had to just get on a plane. Oh, I, um, I thought it was more like uh, <laughs> you guys were on the bus and you're just like, last three, st- we're n- I'm, I'm I just out. Can't, I can't, I do, can't do the bus anymore. <laughs> I can't do can't, the bus I anymore. can't do it. Um, I wanted to ask you about that because yeah. I saw, uh, I was like... I was trying to see when you would be back in town, kind of, mm-hmm. and then I noticed I was like, "Oh, this is like a tour tour." Yeah, it's a tour tour. It was a tour tour. The bus thing. Yeah, that's. I you got to tell me what this I, is I like. I will tell you what it is like. Absolutely. I mean, number one, what's kind of nuts is Cameron and I uh, for the I would say so. This that was twenty seventeen. So for like four years before this tour, we were essentially touring that many cities, yeah. but we had to do it in you know three times as much time because you're flying out and then driving to four cities or three cities over a weekend and then coming back to LA yeah. doing our sh- show every week uh Tuesdays at uh UCB Franklin put your hands together and then going back out every Wednesday and doing it again um which was a lot you know? yeah that's a lot <laughs> it's, of travel <laughs> it's a lot of travel I got really used to traveling I got I got up to uh gold level status Ooh. on Delta Ooh, but now I've dropped back down to silver you which t- feels awful do you get to go in that lounge anymore I didn't I only got to go once, and that was because of somebody else's tickets. Like it was the book, the booking. It was sometimes when you do um, like charity events or something. Yeah. Like Delta donates the like, travel for you, and then they give lounge. you the whole thing. Um, and I got to do it one time. How is it? It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty is great. Is it just couches? Really? It I mean, really I, is <laughs> just. Ca- I mean, it's like glorified hanging. Yeah, there's water. It's kind of like you're in a hotel lobby. But I will yeah. say. You don't have to deal with the other stuff. And there's just one person yeah. that deals with your luggage, which is very nice. It's and better it's than quiet. being in <laughs> C24 exactly. or whatever. Um, but you were touring uh, by uh, bus. But yes, on the bus, which is very rad because you get to do all that stuff in such a shorter amount of time. And then it just becomes your life. And that's the only thing that you're doing, which is kind of nice because you just get to go like, oh, I don't I don't have to do the other stuff. This is all I'm doing. Um, yeah. That has like a romantic... Uh, twist to it that the touring by car or doing the Mm -hmm. flying around doesn't like i don't know when you when you say tour by bus it sounds more like a rock and roll tour than like i do a weekend at this club Mm -hmm. and then you know oh yeah absolutely and i mean it is 
even though like I'm sober, so I don't drink and we don't, we don't have like a rock and roll lifestyle. It totally is because you're essentially like you, so you do the show at eight yeah. and then you do, you do all the stuff afterwards and you wrap out with the, we had a tour manager who like Ooh. took care of all that stuff for us. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, she, we had a female tour manager, a female bus driver. And so you wrap and then you get on the bus and then that's just like where you're living. There's a kitchen on it and a yeah. bathroom. And I will tell everyone you cannot poop on you the bus. You can't poop on the bus. Even I know I mean, know the thing that. is you can, but there's like somewhat of a, I, I don't want to say gentleman's agreement because it's very gendered, yeah. but it's a gentleman's agreement essentially between you and the bus driver that the bus driver is the person that has to clean the toilet. Yeah. And so if you do that, they have to clean out your shit Real all the time. Move. And Real so bad. they're just like, look, I have your life in my hands. I don't want to have your poo in my hands. So could you please hold it <laughs> until we get busy. somewhere? <laughs> yeah. And so you actually get used to that pretty quickly. It was the sleeping that was very difficult for me. That would be my one hang up. It was very hard. I didn't think, like, I don't really sleep on planes anymore because I'm just, they get me more amped when I get on a plane now. Yeah. I just try to get stuff done. But it is, it was so hard to sleep on that thing. So you get done with the show, then you get, you know, and then you, you're coming down from a show and you have all that adrenaline running through you that you yeah, do. Yeah, so you're not going show. to sleep anyway. No, you're not going to sleep anyway. So it's like, you know, min a comedy show wraps out at like 11, midnight or something like that. So you get on the bus and then depending on the route from your show that you just ended to the next city, the bus driver doesn't get on the bus until two, sometimes four in the morning. Really? Again, it's all like when it's closer together, Wait. it's a lot different. Yeah. Where is the bus driver in these? <laughs> the bus hours? driver is at the hotel. Sleeping. Sleeping. Because Thank the God. bus driver has to get yeah. X amount of time off the road for safety, and for their safety fair. for everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> so once they get you to the city, they have like two hours, I think, where they're cleaning the bus, doing bus maintenance, that kind of stuff, figuring out where it needs to be parked, if it's gonna the generator, all the stuff that they have to do. And so then they get a hotel in every city that we're in. We don't always get a hotel. So if the venue has a shower, we don't get a hotel. <laughs> so more often than not, we did not have a hotel yeah. room because that's really all you were. It was just a day hotel. You weren't sleeping. Well, that's, in it. I, you got to give the driver a chance to sleep. I mean, that's, oh, how, yeah, they that's have how Metallica yeah. lost a basis. Yeah. It's, for God's sake. It's nuts <laughs> that they're doing that. We talked to our bus driver and asked if she like trained to do it, like leading yeah. up to doing it. She's like, yeah, I get like two or two or three to four weeks out, she starts. Flipping her sleep mode. schedule, yeah. Oh because I mean, they're just up all night driving at night. <laughs> I, I, you could not trust me. I would, I, I would and they dose. have a jump seat, and I like sat in it and like just like drove with her, and I was like, "This is nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. It's <laughs> a crazy thing." But it was also so awesome because you just travel at night, and then you get you're not getting on planes, you're not getting like sick. There's yeah. no people all around, and it's the honestly, if you fly as much as you as I do, you it really wrecks your body after a while because the, the pressure like pressurization yeah. of it. Cause one flight here and there, you don't really think about it when you're doing it every weekend for two or three months or you're whatever. Just you're just like germ tube. Yeah. Just get having your body day, squeezed and you're just farting all the time. And yeah, <laughs> it's not great, it's but not I, pleasant. I really did like the bus. I don't think we can do it again. We had planned it as like promotion for our show and then the network didn't exist anymore. So we didn't have that. Like, yeah, uh, I think you'll get another bus. I I'm going yeah, to look on the bright side. You'll, get a, you'll be on a bus again. I'm, I'm happy to go back to the plane and driving kind of a thing because it, it is fun. But um, And I think ultimately there's a smaller carbon footprint if you take a bus. Yeah, that's versus probably a plane. true. But did you get to do like come in and, and, and pull into town? And Did you get to see the towns, I guess is my question. Or did you, are you like really busy? from that? Well, I did... We, because you get there at like ele ten or eleven in the morning, yeah, and then the venue doesn't usually open until like four. So really, you're like a feral cat, just like running around. First of all, you're like, where am I going to poop? <laughs> and that's like the first thing that you have to that's deal with. That's my number two concern, <laughs> exactly. and no pun intended. After sleep is <laughs> yeah. my poop schedule. Yes, you have to figure that out immediately. And then once you get that figured out, and you realize, like, okay, I. I'm going to change into these clothes, but they're not my good clothes because I'm going to take a shower at four and I'm going to get, you know, like it just, oh, yeah. you have to completely reorganize the way. And yeah. I was resistant to it because I was like, I don't know why I was just resistant to it. And then I realized, oh, I'm just going to not go to sleep until 3 a.m. because then I'll get used to the bus driving and I'm going to sleep until one or two. Because yeah. I can't shout, I can't do any of the things anyways. So why am I, 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 I literally have no reason to get up. 
other than to prove a point that I'm like up I'm at an eight early in the morning. Bird. <laughs> right, exactly. Hey everybody. Hey I made everybody, coffee. I'm ruining my own life. <laughs> um But I'm but, on a normal person <laughs> schedule. Yeah. But Aren't you proud? Since the shows weren't, you know, we didn't have to do like sound check until six or something like that and check in with the venues and take showers. Um you have like, you know, four or five hours to check out the town. Yeah. And we did I, you don't get to see it as much as when we were driving in between places because it's all at night, so you don't get to see yeah. this. And, and in some instances, that was probably it because we were driving through like Texas and stuff like that. It's like I've There's, been through there, and yeah. it's kind of nice to just skip it. There's some. Spots I love that Texas. If you're scenic. listening from Texas, <laughs> got a big Texas fan base, <laughs> huge in Texas. I got to avoid all those Trump bumper stickers. I literally did not see a single one. Did you, where was the tour, tour from? It w- we went from Seattle. Down to San Francisco or Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, San Diego, uh, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, um, Atlanta, Georgia, Carborough, North Carolina, and then we got into uh, Philly, Brooklyn. Damn, um, I'm trying to remember. And then we went back to Cleveland, and then we went to Chicago, Madison, Minneapolis. I think that's that's a sizable tour. Yeah, I, I have to, that feels like less than 17. Pro- then we did Providence, Rhode Island, Boston, and uh, Portland, Maine. Yeah, but the, that wasn't on the bus. But you—that's a—that—that's not like a Northwest tour. So no, I mean, no, that's no, like no. The full damn. It was country. like a, the whole country. <laughs> uh, see, that's like very romantic to me. I it would was. Love I mean, to it was great. Tour the country by bus. Yeah, it was really great. So you got to get to the point where you're uh, like big enough that you can like take three days off in between gigs oh, yeah. and then really milk it. Really milk it. But really I am really doing a tour, it. which we'll talk about later, um, that's just me, that's like kind of smaller cities in sort of the mid, middle eastern... <laughs> the tertiary market. Yeah, I'm going to the mid-east, um, <laughs> but like through it's Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then into the Midwest. And so I have a couple days in between yeah. some of the chunks that I'll get to see some parts of America that I haven't been to in uh, a while. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I just did a, a road trip through the Southwest up into the Midwest. Oh, yeah. And it's so, I, I hadn't done it in a decade. Yeah. And it feels amazing. It's You nuts. feel like alive. Oh, yeah. You see things you haven't seen before. Oh, oh yeah. It's so good. I'm, I mean, it's just, it. as awful as things can be right now, <laughs> yeah. to think about our country and what our country means to us and to other people in the world, like all of those, you know, sort of lofty things. When you are in a car driving through the plain States or driving through the desert, you're just like, holy shit, we are so small. (laughs) There is so much of this country that so many people never get to see because either they don't want to, or they can't, you know, um, it's like, I remember seeing the grand Canyon for the first time. I just saw the grand Canyon for the first time. No, I mean, I was, I think I was 19 yeah. and I was, you know what I had like dyed black hair and what I wasn't emo, but I was also like Grand Canyon, whatever, <laughs> you know, like, I just want to listen to Fugazi or whatever Stop. bullshit, you know, <laughs> and then went and walked up to it and was just like, holy shit. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's the sublime, you know, like it that captures whole, you. Yeah. You're just like, I couldn't have. I could never have imagined that this is what it looked like, even though I know exactly what it looks like. Yeah, but I've then when you're there, you're just like, I, wh- uh, wh- what? <laughs> You've seen it a million times on yeah. TV, but when you're there, because it is like the approach to it, where you oh, yeah. s- use the depth of it and the huge, uh, 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 I can't even, it's so yeah. big, I can't even think no, of an it's adjective just, right it's now. The sublime. <laughs> it's, it's just so, like, it's beyond oh. words, and it is an emotion and a space, and it's all these things at once. So you should play the Grand Canyon yeah, if you I'm get a chance. Grand Canyon. They got, they got cabins. Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, that's where you are now. I believe you started in Chicago. I did start doing stand-up in Chicago, yeah. I did, too. Mm-hmm. That's great. We probably... Wait, when did, we, when did you start? What well, year did you start? I have to, I, every time I tell people from Chicago this, I have to immediately backpedal and be like, well, oh, I only did it for... You don't need to back... <laughs> hey, no backpedaling here unless... You want to, you're on a unicycle and you I need to balance I am on a up. unicycle. Right <laughs> uh, it's very hard to do this show. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a workout though. Yeah, I uh, did it from May. I want to. It's my ten years coming up soon too. I should like figure this out. I did it from like April or May of two thousand and eight until I moved in August of that year. Mm-hmm. So that was like little chunk of time. That's still starting in Chicago yeah. though. I th- I I mean, do people give you shit for that or something? No, but I immediately feel uh, like 
uh, like a fraud when I say I started in Chicago. Because there's a Chicago like thing. Sure. You know what but, I mean? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, whatever. It's That's like, oh, I was hanging with Kumail and uh, <laughs> right. me and, you know. You didn't come up in Chicago. No. But you started doing stand up in Chicago. Exactly. Those are the two, and there that's you what go. you were saying. You, you started go. doing stand up in Chicago. There you go. Look, I didn't come up in Chicago either. Where did I you come started up? in Chicago and I came up out here because I started doing stand up in August of 2011 mm-hmm. and then I moved here in uh, September of 2012. So that's a little over a, yeah. one year. And I don't think you can come up in a place if you haven't been there for more than a calendar yeah, year. Yeah, you got to like really dig you into that. You have to that. go to, to, if you're talking about like, yeah, I came up in Chicago, I rose through the ranks, I did the thing, yeah. I did the steps, I did the whatever, um, that I didn't do. But I was like privy to all those steps and I didn't yeah. learn them in Chicago. <laughs> um, but I have no, I, I like Chicago and the fact that that's where I learned and a lot of my friends are there and I met a lot of the friends that I have now and that time is really important to me, but at yeah. the same time, I'm not going to like fight anybody about like claiming Chicago as. Because in my mind, I would think of you as a Chicago comic. That's funny. Yeah. Because in my mind, I think of myself as a Los Angeles comic. See, because when when uh, when the Chicago comics come to Los Angeles, yeah. uh, I have no idea how long they've been doing it right. in Chicago. So I just assume like, oh, they're from Chicago. <laughs> yeah. They're heavy drinkers. <laughs> right. They love fucking eating all the... T- like, you are like- correct <laughs> about all those things. <laughs> it's always... Uh, there's like a there's a learning curve when people from Chicago move to Los Angeles mm-hmm. of like, oh, you got to slow it way down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better... You have to drive. You have to drive. <laughs> I mean, it's a, lot, it's a lot different now with Lyft and everything. But yeah. like... I do remember moving here and being like, what is this food? <laughs> like just being hungry all the time. And now I go back to Chicago and I'm like, what is this food? <laughs> it's not what I want. <laughs> My tastes have changed. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I di- so I didn't dig into that aspect of Chicago, but mm-hmm. I kind of like, part of me wishes that I did, but then another part of me that's 34 uh, absolutely does <laughs> I Jeff, as a 35-year-old person, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> So oh, where did you me. do stand up in Chicago for my those f- for the months that you did? Uh, my f- uh, well, I did it. There, uh, there was a mic at Shuba's. Mm-hmm. I did that. See, the, that mic was done when I started. Oh ah, well, I only did that there maybe like five mm-hmm. times, and that mm-hmm. is even pushed. And then the rest, like it, it, there was like a just random mics, a super well lit. Um, <laughs> coffee shop or something way uh-huh. up north that I remember I did it uh-huh. and then one bar and that's all I do I actually mm-hmm. remember doing improv uh, at a show that your wife hosted oh really yeah, yeah. that's awesome what yeah, uh, up in uptown some like oh was it the upstairs, annoyance theater no it was like an no. upstairs bar upstairs bar yeah hmm. but I remember I, I did a show <laughs> where I did improv and again I did don't she remember she two sides of hair she did she did have two sides of hair look at that and then also she on the bill she figureless gloves on <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think she. That was the look back then. I don't remember. I did not know her yet. No, she definitely had two sides of hair. And then also on that show, uh, to name drop, mm-hmm. uh, Lauren Lapkiss and Candy Lawrence. Oh did, yeah, like, improv uh, together. Money kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh-huh. There's like, so I have like, oh, I have a little Chicago in me that yeah, I can dude. pull out. That's that's real Chicago stuff right there. Hell yeah! Hell Thank yeah, you. dude! Thank yeah. you. <laughs> From one person who didn't come up in Chicago to another. We're really That's some real <laughs> Chicago we're really shit. <laughs> patting ourselves on the back for our Chicago time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cubbies, all that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to the meat and potato. Speaking Great. of Chicago, let's get Speaking to the meat of, yeah, and exactly. potatoes of this <laughs> podcast. Let's get to the deep dish pizza of this podcast. <laughs> Don't didn't like it. That's a lot of people podcast. don't like it. It's too much. It's like well, I like it you, on occasion. If you want to eat cheese, just put it in a bowl. Yeah, anyway. I mean, great point. <laughs> I'm trying to. Th- there was another pizza place in Chicago. I know we have to get to the point of the podcast, but I can't. Uh, Chicago Pizza Grinder Company. I think it was on Clark Street uh, or Clark Avenue. Jesus Christ. Sorry, it's been a while. I apologize. Wow, we are losing I, all I, of our... Anyone I, who has spent any time in when, Chicago When the hates Cubs us. beat Cleveland in the World Series, I was like, oh, Chicago is dead to me. Dead. <laughs> but there's this basement pizza place that's like uh-huh. around where the Valentine's Day mar- massacre was that they make grinders, but they also make these upside-down pizzas where they... It's a, a little ceramic bowl that's mm-hmm. like as big as my hands, right? And so whatever you want in the pizza... They put the sauce and like mushrooms and stuff like that, and then cheese in that, and then they put the dough over top of it, and it almost looks like the top of a mushroom. Okay. And then they put that in the oven, and that cooks, and they flip it over and take the bowl out, and it's like a bread bowl pizza. 
It's okay. I kind of like this. It's a fun change. So <laughs> shout out to that if it's still open. <laughs> if it's still open, we have no idea. <laughs> I you have might no have, clue. You might have dreamed it. I, I might have. Uh, I, I was going to go off on a tangent, but I know <laughs> it's not worth it. I was like, well, let's get into it. A uh, hot dog. So what do you think of the Chicago <laughs> dog? Okay. That's let's what get we to added our wedding. Okay. <laughs> let's get to the exit strategy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it. you're uh, out touring the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a, 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 your own television show and uh-huh. more. Yes. But let's say mm-hmm. that's all gone. Yeah. You didn't have comedy. You didn't mm-hmm. perform. You yeah. were no longer an artiste uh-huh. professionally. What would you do with your life, do you think? I have one follow-up question for you okay, before absolutely. I answer this question. I, I don't think it's going to change my answer, uh-huh. but I do want to know. So I'm still me, right? Yeah, you're still you. In this scenario, yeah, I'm yeah. still me. Nothing has changed other than I'm not doing that anymore. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Okay. Now. Wait, if, I have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you think you were? <laughs> I just mean like, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, don't know who I thought I was. It's everything you... You know, it's a podcast. <laughs> I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> everything that you... All the knowledge, all the experiences that Nothing you've accumulated changes, up, up to this point, you just don't do stand-up for whatever reason. Okay, great. So it's hard to choose, and I think a lot of people might that know me and are listening to this might be thinking, oh, baseball, obviously. Yeah. That's not my answer. <laughs> because what I would actually like to do if I got if I wasn't doing this at all anymore... Uh huh. This is going to sound insane, but this is what I would love to do. I like salvage. <laughs> I like, oh, okay. do you know the television show American Pickers? I've heard of it. I know the, the concept You know the concept saying. of it. Yeah. They go to people's houses or they're, uh, you know, sprawling estates uh-huh. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and they pick through their stuff. There are collections of things that they have collected over the years that are either like polished collections of things or just like piles of what seems like junk. To most people, but that is actually what I would want to do, and then like curate it and sell it to yeah. people. Yeah, so you're like looking for hidden treasure, basically. A hundred percent. Okay, but not necessarily like for the money, because to me, the thing I like about that show is that I have that like in my family. Like one side of my family is hoarders, yeah, for like emotional reasons, <laughs> and then the other <laughs> side of my family is that kind of like junker, sort of uh. Uh, just like holding on to things because I might need it. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Or I know how much that is worth. Yeah. It's like a, like hillbilly investments, <laughs> hillbilly 401k. Like if I fill my house full of all these lawnmower parts, like they are worth money. So one yeah. day it's, I'll cash it in. You it's, never know. You never know. You never and know. And I can fix a lawnmower. I can make however much money. Yeah. Or, you know, collecting whatever thing. And so I just like, I have a, a compulsion to collect uh-huh. even now. And when I tour and do like especially like festivals where you're in a place for like a couple of days i love to go to like they're not a fancy antique store but like no the, the, no, 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 no 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 that's not my people the other people that are like yeah i have an antique store and everything's like kind of piled up and there's a lot of stuff in there. you gotta kind of do that's a little I work like to go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely because they like an la uh antique store i really probably any city it's just like they know what they got oh they yeah. know what it costs Top and dollar. they're gonna charge you more yeah I like to go into the ones where you could be like, hey, who would you charge me for those two? What if I bought both of them? Would you knock five bucks off? You know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like a, like a low-key haggle. Absolutely. Oh, that's absolutely great. Like I so, was in Winnipeg and I went into an antique store and I love to collect. I, right now, I collect small things because I don't have a house or anything yeah. like that. And that's fine. And I like cameras. I also like lighters. That's what I like to collect. Like a Zippo? So, like Zippo lighters. Any, I don't really collect the lighters as much anymore because I don't smoke, so I don't yeah, have any reason not really. to. Not anymore. But... um. I, I just like looking at them. And at this antique store in Winnipeg, I found a lighter that was also a camera. What? Not a functioning camera, but a camera that was a lighter. And it was on a little tripod. <laughs> it came with all the things. It has a little compass in it that's that works. That's accurate. It's a little lighter that the top opens up. It doesn't, it's not yeah. a Zippo style. It's got a camera, and then there's just a little piece of metal, and it opens, and the wick is right here. Oh, I think I know exactly what you you're know talking about. I mean? That's like super old time. Yeah, those yeah, old yeah. timey wide ones. Yeah. And then it has a little tripod for it. And so I bought it with another little camera, and I got like five bucks off of it or whatever. And I took it back to the hotel. I was lo- looking at it, so excited about my yeah. little camera, because it was like right in my Venn diagram overlap, you know? You just found like, the Holy so Grail. I found it. Like, <laughs> I don't need anything else, but of course I do. Absolutely. So I took the tripod off just to check it out out and i flipped it over and stamped on the bottom it says made in occupied japan oh my god and so then i 
was looking that up and was like, oh my God, that's incredibly depressing and awful. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's an artifact of this time that is, however depressing, still a reminder of all of this stuff. And like, then I learned something. Yeah. <laughs> this know? lighter has a story. Yeah. More complex than you and I and several other people put together. Yeah. And I <laughs> love those stories. Like, the thing I love about that show is those guys, and this is probably why I asked you that question, because I couldn't necessarily do that job that they do in the way that they do it, because they're two white guys, and they're very unassuming looking, Yeah, and they know how to talk to people, and uh, they can go to a lot of places that I probably can't, and that's not a complaint. Are you any- talking like rural? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Like it just go and honestly, just going into people's houses, you know, yeah. like they do have to do a lot of work to be like, Hey, are you cool with it? You know, whatever. <laughs> like it's a lot of negotiation of going into somebody's house and looking through their stuff. It's an know? intimate moment. It is a sure. totally intimate yeah. moment. And so I love to watch that show because I know I'll never get to do it like they do it, but um, yeah. it, they, they do, it is a TV show. But I do know people that do this, and they care about the story and the history of the thing. It's not always about the money, and it's not always about like getting top dollar and turning it over and making the most money. Yeah. It, even if they do that, there's still this knowledge base that they're building in their own head that they then share with somebody else, and then it keeps going. Yeah. And you learn about the denim mill, that the <laughs> jackets that you're buying this, that you're really focused yeah. on these like jean jacket work wear. That's what I'm into right now. That's what I'm buying right now. That's what people want. Then you have to learn the whole thing. It's like living history. Though. It is. It keeps moving the the story along. Yeah. And passing it to another because per- like there's my dad loves to do this whenever we go to antiques uh, shops. He'll point it. You know what that is? Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm like I don't. No. Because that's <laughs> yeah. something that doesn't. It's like like a, a like a wooden handle yep. with like a flippity mm-hmm. metal iron rusted rod, and he'll be like, "That is how they <laughs> used to, you know, like right? That. Yeah. So. I think that there's some value in people just remembering what this stuff is. A hundred percent. Because you can't Google it. You can't be like, what is this, this wood <laughs> rod <laughs> yeah. with metal? Yeah. Right. You Somebody have has to, to know. Yeah. You and it also forces you to ask questions. Yeah. When you have like gaps in your knowledge base. And then also it's it's some of it is highly regional. So then you're talking about like very specific history to the space that it's in. Then also what if you find something in California that it, it shouldn't be here? You know, that kind of, you know, you're like, how, who, how in the world did it get to here? Like, I remember watching an episode where a guy literally has probably, I mean, there's no reason to not think that it's the only copy. It is a photo album of the Wilkes Booth family. (laughs) Oh, And it is like, it looks like a little, like how you would think like a, a little Bible would look like with a little clasp and stuff. And there's a picture of his mother. Nobody knows what she looks like. That's like the only photograph of her. And this guy got it. He also had the first Superman and the first Spider-Man. The first Spider-Man was worth like $15,000. See, that's your family being like, well, we got that John Wilkes Booth photo (laughs) album. I mean, you never know when we might need it. Yeah, you might be able to pay off the student loans or not. And they know about student loans Mm -hmm, back then. mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's let's do this. So you have the... uh, the cameras mm-hmm. and the lighters. But yes. this is going to be your life. Sure, right? yes. So let's let's upgrade. Mm-hmm. What, like I guess, field or items mm-hmm. would you like to sort of specialize in or or, or, or maybe learn more about mm. and, and kind of track down? That's a good question. Because something that I have a basic knowledge of is uh, vintage guitars oh, okay. and amplifiers. So I feel like I already have that. And yeah. I don't need to, it's just something that I need to brush up on you yeah. know, and like dust off or something. So if I was going to get into something new, I think that I would probably, I would probably want to get into either motorcycles and not just the motorcycles themselves, yeah. but all of it because engine parts, the ephemera, all of it. <laughs> And what's nuts is some some stuff some of the motorcycles you can't they all got scrapped during the war. <clears throat> so there's certain ones yeah. that like they don't exist. They don't exist anymore. But if you find one, how the hell did it stick around? Yeah. You know? Also, how do these engine parts stick around? All of it. But then also you're talking about <laughs> engine parts and engines that have been fixed by people that just made their own pieces. And then, <laughs> then it almost becomes a, a piece of like folk art or something. Yeah. You know? It's a like a, again living history. Yeah. Holy shit. And so then everything else around that because yeah. you have motorcycle gangs and all all of that, all the ephemera, the clothing. Do you ride? 
Uh, I haven't in a long time. Okay, I, I, was, hoping, to... I was hoping you'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like grew up with it yeah. a lot, and I've wanted to, to, to ride again, but... I also live here in Los Angeles, yeah. and uh, the statistic is that your life what span... What better place to ride in <laughs> I know, but your lifespan shortens to one year if you buy a motorcycle in Los Angeles. Did you know that? Holy Statistically shit. speaking. <sighs> yeah. But I would probably never... If I, if I did indeed ever buy a motorcycle, I don't know that I would ever drive it on the freeway here. Like, in, yeah. in, inter... I would never drive it, like, on the 101 to get to... Whatever Studio City or something like that. Yeah, you would not. It would not be a long commute bike. No, no, no. I would yeah. be going east probably. Yeah, you know, what I mean? you know, yeah, like yeah. I would. The freeway. No, we're not taking the the ten to the Santa Monica. Nope. Uh, on the motors. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. But then again, who knows? Um, but oh, but the weather. I mean, say from I some know, recent right? rain, it's the place to be. It's so perfect. I guess you could move up to like. Uh, I don't know, like Sacramento area or something. Mm. Just like a little more. I was just talking about Sacramento. No. I love Sacramento. There you go. Could Old that be Sacramento? The... It's very cool. Could that be the base of your operation? It could be the base of my operation. Sacramento. I love Sacramento. Operation. I'll call it Ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my item. Yeah. That I have always wanted to find, and I don't have any use for it, and I don't know what I would do with it. But I've always wanted to have in my home uh, one of those like candlestick phones from the '30s. Oh yeah, dude. My dad you had one up. of those when I was a kid. Yeah. That was the phone I w- used when I was like four. What? Three or four, yeah. Did you grow up in like a <laughs> rural cabin where it was going on? <laughs> Basically. No, my. I mean, I grew up in a area of Akron called Kenmore, and it yeah. was like the lower income area. That's like, so the whole town city was built around the tire factories mm-hmm. in Akron, and I mean, before that, it was the canal system, and then the, the tire companies developed there, and then everything got rebuilt around that when the canals like flooded or, or caught everything on fire. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how a canal would catch everything on fire, but I can't remember. There was a fire, then there were floods, whatever. <laughs> don't hold her to <laughs> So then they built the tire factories, and then the, the whole layout, the grid layout of the city is all... Not, not only geographically, but like socioeconomically laid out from that tire factory so yeah. all the lower income like the 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 less thans if you will are all in the like southwest because that's the way the wind blew like <laughs> <laughs> the wind blows and so the 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 uh higher ups and the ceos of the like fa cyberling yeah. who owned firestone his mansion is, is in like west akron yeah. because that was like the most ideal he said, like, to I hell with those it. winds. Yeah, exactly. So, because I mean, but imagine, Jeff, yeah. in 19, whatever, 32, 30, whatever, 46, how badly a city that has three tire factories in it <laughs> would smell. Oh. Just imagine, God. with no like mm. EPA regulations. Just coated lungs and throats uh-huh. for yeah. your whole life. Which is funny because. There's a joke, a regional joke, that Akron is the capital of West Virginia because all the people who didn't want to go into the coal mines or wanted a different job migrated up to Akron yeah. to work for the tire factories because they got their it was a better job than going into a, a coal different mine. place. Mm-hmm. From tires oh, instead no. of the earth. And so your family was like, we're going to hang on to our phone from 1932. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it works. <laughs> yeah. I think in this situation, it was more of like a batch, uh, a, a recently divorced dad, uh, just like having the phone he could have. Like he probably found it on the street or something. See if I ever find it, though. I'll look for one for you. I would love. Do that. you have a, a color preference? Uh, well, what colors do they come in? Well, I remember his was black with like a gold band on it, but oh, I've I'd seen like white that. and red. I think I'd want it black just because that's what I've always that's seen in the, the movies. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that might be the harder one to find, though. Yeah. And then uh, maybe I could hook it up to my uh, apartment's buzzer and finally be Oof. able to buzz people in that with would my be nice. candlestick phone. You might have to look into some rewiring, though, because it would it'd be the old, like, actually wiring I'd have to, to call the, the operator and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Sarah. <laughs> uh, could you get me Rhea? It's almost like having a secretary. <laughs> Kansas uh, 5. <laughs> Garfield 1. So you're going to be a, uh, a picker. Yeah, I think so. You I know what? That... You got me into telephones. Now I'm like, ooh, I'm going to look for telephones. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not small. Sorry, Cameron. <laughs> Just surrounded with phones. <laughs> well, ooh, I, I mean, also like clocks, too. So Jesus Christ, I could go all day. 
Yeah, I think you're going to need a couple storage sheds. I think so. Yeah, in Sacramento. I'm going to need multiple buildings. And probably a workbench. Mm-hmm. You're going to need a lot of square footage. I would love to collect tools, too, like old tools. Yeah. I have a belt. Have you ever seen the tool to punch a hole in a belt? I don't think that I have. It kind of looks like a pair of pliers with like a, a boat oh, steering wheel on it. I have seen that. You've seen That's that. That's for so a belt. That's for a belt to, to punch the holes. And it has different gauge holes. Yeah. Because, you know, people were poor. So they'd rather buy the tool to extend or shorten the belt than buy a new belt. Wait, how many different sizes of belt holes do you need? I mean, it depends. Women's belts versus men's belts. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not the one that's creating off. that binary there. I'm simply speaking to it. <laughs> It was a different time. <laughs> it definitely was. And then you're, um, I, I usually ask if people uh, would find, uh, like, if that would be a, a good enough creative outlet for you, or do you think that you would need something else to? Well, to I mean, I think that I it would be, although I also like to take photographs. Yeah. And I feel like those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. Because the ones that get away are the ones that, you know, you just can't have, or the ones you have to get rid of. <laughs> you can take... <laughs> You know, <laughs> tasteful <laughs> photographs of them. That's going to be the hardest part of your uh, your life is the stuff that you can't hang on to anymore. A hundred percent. You can't even imagine the stuff that I still have, even though I've like moved around the country a ton. Yeah. I have some t-shirts that were my mom's when she was in high school. Can I just say <laughs> that when you are in your 80s, yeah. you are going to have the coolest house. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you been to that? There's like a, it's uh, up in the valley area there's like a, a mansion that somebody bought or somebody built by themselves with garbage i forget the name of it yes it's like he, he built his own castle yeah i think it was on i saw it on tv and i can't remember if i saw it on american pickers or not yeah but i think i i yes i think it was actually on american pickers it's called like the glendora castle or something yes like no that. i know what you're talking about like that's how i picture like the walls are built out of cans the walls are built out of cans and every th- which way there's like a motorcycle built yep. into the wall i know exactly but there's what you're like talking about. uh just rooms and rooms and rooms of exactly this stuff mm-hmm. you're talking about yeah you gotta go oh yeah i definitely have to go up there and also did you see bright lights the no. the carrie fisher and um debbie Reynolds. Oh, thank you. Jesus. Uh, that documentary, number one, amazing. It's yeah. it's it's very good. Um, number two, they lived on almost the same property, like two houses right next to each other. And Carrie Fisher's house is essential was essentially like I hope that some I th- hope that her daughter is keeping it and yeah. turning it into a mu- museum because it is just a museum of her life, you know, like all, all the, the things in it. Yeah, just memorabilia yeah. and also just things from her life that she collected and kept and just surrounded herself with yeah um and then also debbie reynolds was uh and if you watch the documentary she's noted as a hollywood historian yeah she was saving all this stuff when people were just like giving getting rid of it and it's heartbreaking in the documentary she has to sell she was collecting the rat pack outfit like the original Rat Pack outfit, she like went to one of their houses and was like, "Can I have your underwear?" <laughs> like getting, she had the underwear from their costumes and had all of it because no one, no one they thought to hang on to yeah. it. And then she ended up having to like auction it off. Yeah, I saw the big uh, was auction. out of money. That's probably like the only time in human history where that will all be in one place. Yep. And now it's dispersed. It's, yeah. Where who's gonna go out and find it? But exactly. Rhea Butcher. Rhea Butcher knocking on the door. Where's your underwear? <laughs> Well, I think that that's a good uh, <laughs> that's a good point to stop. I think yep. that's a, a damn good exit strategy, and I love the uh, enthusiasm. Yeah, I love. It. I, I mean, this I would be happy to do it. I think this might just happen. It might just be my retirement plan. <laughs> that's the point of this. Uh, it's really basically this is retirement counseling. As I like it's it. Pre-retirement counseling. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back. Uh, Rhea is going to pick the sponsor for this week's episode. So uh, look forward to that mm-hmm. in just a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. I don't. Uh, <laughs> or fun. I mean, it could be as fun or as you know. Honestly, I've been doing this podcast for a couple of months now, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's fun. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's wacky. Sometimes people don't even give me straight answers, but then mm-hmm. sometimes people get really real, and it's like kind of like. Uh, I'm like, oh man, I hope people like this. I hope this isn't depressing. Mm. Like, people have had like moments. Wow, like yeah. real sponsors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had a few uh, 
We've had a few bites. Mm. We had Nolitz Gin. Nice. Uh, reach out to Alan Strickland Williams and Lifeway Kiefer. Mm. Uh, was a little interested in um, uh, Matt Ingebrigtsen. Interesting. So I'm just saying, like, this could be, this could be, this could be something. All right. We could, hey, we could shop the series <laughs> right here. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, well, what network would you want it to be on? What's the preferred I just home? don't even care anymore. Oh, come on, <laughs> like, come on honestly, Rhea. Well, I mean, the preferred home, those have sailed. So, oh. you know, like the, you know easy, what, the easy streamers. Those are, those are Execs, gone. they go in and out all the time. We could <laughs> sure. get it back. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you back. I think we'll get you on... Uh, uh, sli- Crackle? Crackle? <laughs> no, because you got to watch the ads in between. Uh, sling TV. Mm, just like... Random sling, like we're like going into original productions. Got it. Cord cutters. Nice. That kind of thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just helping as, like as well as I can. Uh, let's talk sponsors, though. Great. Your sponsor, not mine. Awesome. Who is the sponsor for this week's episode? I mean, I want to get really conceptual. So I'm glad, I'm glad. Let's do it. Let's go down this road. I also have a company that I can shout out to, to make that. But, okay. um, my my conceptual sponsor of this episode is watching a lot of movies and enjoying it. Okay, <laughs> let's let's okay. <laughs> when I'm watching all these movies mm-hmm. and talk me through it. Yeah. So well, sometimes you put in a movie and you're like, God damn it, I did not like this movie at all. Uh huh. But then sometimes, maybe your partner is real sick. Yeah. And you guys don't have anything else you can do. <laughs> watch a lot of TV and you don't want to watch just TV anymore. I'm with you on that. And you have a backlog of movies, and you know what? They all fit together, and they all make you feel good. Like, I can't give you specific movies because <laughs> everybody's is different. But it's like but a I mini curated to, marathon. Yeah, this this year I was lucky enough to receive screeners for the first time oh. in my own name. First time, Jeff, never happened before. <laughs> for the people who don't know, yep. in Hollywood, if you are lucky enough, <laughs> yeah. the movie studios. We'll send you DVDs, maybe even Blu-rays, yeah, of literally every nominated or close to nominated movie mm-hmm. that has been released over there. People get dozens and dozens of movies that you normally would have to go to the theater to yep. see. They get them to their house. Also, Netflix sends you discs of their shows and a code to watch their shows on Netflix. Wait, what? Yeah, I just got a box set of like Glow and Orange yeah. is the New Black and Stranger Things and The Crown. And maybe one other thing that I can't think of right now. Just a big box of DVDs that I'm not going to open at all. <laughs> because, <laughs> number one, I've seen a lot of those things already. I have a Netflix subscription. And number two, what are they doing? I mean, I yeah. get it. Like, they're, they're just trying to be part of the thing. It's for... Well, yeah, you do have, you have to have a box. That Some of these boxes are ornate. Mm-hmm. But then also, you got to think of these, like dinosaurs that have been around since mm-hmm. like you got to think about robert yeah, evans I and all these other a-holes that. yeah you gotta think about robert you evans. gotta think about rob bob evans bob evans <laughs> i don't know if he's still an eligible academy member but or if he ever was uh but you've and got, I got a few download codes too where you like stream it you can stream it but you already can stream it oh for uh the movies the, oh, okay, the movie okay. ones <laughs> like call me by your name i got a code for it that'll be the future but it's not quite there not yet not quite there but yet. it's kind of nice because you get these little like paper mm-hmm. envelopes and they say oh i get to watch itania tonight mm-hmm. for free mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you have had a movie marathon uh, for recently. 10 days for basically 10 day- oh, yeah i watched I, d- I think I just got The Darkest Hour today, and it was very triggering. <laughs> I'm not going to watch that at nope. all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I watched essentially all of the other ones. Yeah. Um, You're all caught up. I'm all caught up. And you enjoyed them all? Because yep. that was well, a caveat in the thing. It was a caveat. Now, my enjoyment doesn't necessarily hinge on whether I thought the movie was good or not. Uh-huh. Because sometimes I can enjoy watching a movie that I don't like. Yes. And such is the case with one film called The Shape of Water, <laughs> ah. which I did not like. Here we now, go. if I was in the theater and watching uh-huh. it, my experience might have been different. Yes. Because I couldn't get up and I couldn't go, oh, come on, also. <laughs> well, you could, but they would <laughs> kick could, you out of the AMC. People would get very upset about it. Yeah. Um, and so when I watched it, was like, I don't know about this. I like a lot of the pieces. Yes. A lot of the pieces. Most of the pieces. I agree story, with what you're saying. However, no. Yeah. I did not like the story so much. The story's ridiculous. The story is ridiculous. Uh, my fiance works at DreamWorks. 
uh-huh. and she gets to watch Guillermo. She also was not impressed. Uh-huh. She uh, watches Guillermo's uh, Netflix animated series, mm-hmm. and she's like, "He just did everything he always does." Right. Apparently, it's like he's just it's just paint by Guillermo numbers. Yeah, I mean, people. I all I, what I said on Twitter was, "My wife is making me watch the fish movie," <laughs> and then I responded to that tweet after we were done and i was like friends i didn't like the fish movie yeah that's what i said i didn't like the fish movie not the fish movie is bad it. i didn't make any sort of universal statement because yeah. we're very upset very upset that i didn't like the movie and i was like i didn't say you don't have to like the movie i just don't like the movie yeah people are very to. really holding on to but then i talked to other people in real life and they were like yeah it's his movies are a mess yeah, it's it, but I I experienced the thing you were talking about where if you see it in a theater, yeah. if I see a movie in a theater, yeah, ninety percent of the time, regardless <laughs> sure. of the garbage I am yeah. seeing, I'm gonna have a good time because I'm in the dark. There's popcorn yes. if I want it. It's fun. I will now exactly what you just said to me happened to me watching three billboards <laughs> because I walked out of it and wrote a tweet that said I liked it a lot, and now and I went back and was like, no, you didn't. You didn't <laughs> like it a lot. Like I just, it was right after, yeah. and I was, but I was commenting on the fact that I liked it a lot, but I did not like the way the audience was laughing at the N word and the F word throughout the yeah. whole movie because, like, I don't care what the movie was trying to say about it. All the people around me thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> so, like, it was a fun energy <laughs> right, in yeah. the room. Ugh. But I go to this one theater here uh, called the Vista, which Absolutely. is like you know, and you could see. I mean, I did not see the Justice League in there, so I won't go mm-hmm. that far. I did not see that movie. I have no interest in seeing it. I'm with you. But honestly, could probably see it in there and enjoy it more than I would if I saw it somewhere else. Yeah, more because than in an AMC. It's, yes, it's yeah. that quality of a theater yeah. that just it transports you back to a different time. And I grew up, the first theater I ever went to and went to regularly was a single screen theater yeah. in Akron, Ohio that then later burnt down. Ooh. And it was arson for sure. <laughs> uh, but the <laughs> thing I love to talk about about that movie theater Maybe I'm just sponsored by the concept of movies is 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 more what it is. But that movie Showbiz, theater babe. when you went the the concessions was upstairs. Yeah. And it was on a second level with that was open to the movie so you got to still watch the what? movie if you went up to get concep- concessions. How has that Brilliant never been idea. done every time I since? I have no idea. You go to the to the baseball game, you go to the basketball game, you go to anywhere else they got TV so you don't miss a minute yeah. of the game. You go to the movie theater I've been to some movie theaters where they pipe in the sound in, in the, the bathrooms. Bathroom. I love that. That's a good, that's classy move. Classy move. I you think we should today. open a movie theater. Let's <laughs> open a movie theater. <laughs> so you're enjoying the movies, you're seeing the movies, yep. mm-hmm. whether you're at a theater or you're at home. Mm-hmm. But basically, uh, you want people to embrace the concept of just letting yourself float, or, float through the world of cinema. Put the phone away. Yeah. Put the phone Put away. Put the phone away. You could IMDb it later. Yeah. And get also, a little notepad. The second you get your phone out, you're not paying attention. Exactly. To me. You're not being sucked in. I try not to do that. If I'm purposely, if I'm sitting down to watch a movie, the phone goes away. Yeah. Do because the lights like, come off? As much as possible. Okay. I have a very. You got to have some safety. I have a, yes, of course. <laughs> I have a setup. I keep the light on in the. We have a open concept apartment. Yeah. The kitchen is like just right there, so we keep that light on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Leave that one on. You live in this apartment. I man. live in this apartment. This wait, this is my apartment. <laughs> 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 All right. So the sponsor of this week's episode <laughs> is uh, the Wonder of Cinema. Yeah, it I is. mean, let's just say it. That's what's giving me life. That yeah. and Ebbets Flannels hats. <laughs> <laughs> that one might actually be more lucrative. You could get like free hat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hear that, Ebbets? Uh, do you want to make your uh, your favorite of the year pick, or is that too movie? Too much? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard this year because I really can't narrow it down to one out of two. Okay. It's, to me, physically impossible. Give me the two, then. The two are Get Out okay. and Lady Bird. All right. Because I, I, I just can't... They're perfect movies. The two, what they're, those two movies, what they're doing, they do it perfectly. So I can't... You can't pick. It's, I, I can't. I can't actually... And you don't have to. I don't have to because I... I'm not. You can on just the like board of the Oscar. I can just You don't watch have it. to have a favorite. But there, I, I, there's not a single movie. Even The Shape of Water, I enjoyed watching it because yeah. the set design was beautiful, the costumes were beautiful, the performances were wonderful. Like all of that, 
Doug Jones is amazing in the movie. Yeah. All of those things are great. So I there's I didn't see a single movie this year in the theater or at home, not including planes. <laughs> that, <laughs> that I didn't like in some way. All it right. was a really good year for movies. Like people I don't know, there were just some really good movies. Open up your heart to movies, people. Mm-hmm. Don't I, let, I Tanya's wonderful. Don't let them go away. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to be gone if we don't keep seeing them. <laughs> and all we'll have is stupid television. Yeah. Prestige television. Well, that would actually be fine. There's a lot of great prestige <laughs> There's a television. lot of great prestige <laughs> television. But we all know what happened when we got a little too focused on television. Uh, we made somebody president from it. So uh, also, let's go to the movies. Uh, pr- speaking of prestige television, uh, Rhea has a prestige television show that needs to get <laughs> back on the air. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, if someone were to be listening to this yes. and they had never heard of you, seen yes. you, anything like that, Which but, they the were int- are high. but they were intrigued, <laughs> yep. uh, what is something in your uh, career or life or on the internet that you mm-hmm. would point someone to to say, this is Rhea Butcher, check me out? Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I have a Conan set that's up there on the internet somewhere from right after the Cavs won the NBA Finals. So you could watch that. That's a good one. You can watch the first episode of the first season of Take My Wife on YouTube. Um, is that we, is it legal? It is legal. Okay. We put it up there. It's always right. been up there. Um, and it's t- still up there t- as far as I know. Um, so you could watch that. Um, hoping to find a new place for the rest of it to stream because the first season did come out and Aaron was very... Very well critically received. People liked it. Um, and so we're just, the second season is done, but the <laughs> network is also done. So <laughs> we R. just, uh, so. <laughs> RIP. Um, so there's just, uh, we need to get it somewhere, but we don't own the rights to it, so we can't just do it. Um, and then a lot of people have a lot of conversations about it. So you could also find me on Twitter. It's at Rhea Butcher, R H E A B U T C H E R. Same thing for Instagram. And then I have a website that is just my name again, and I'm touring, like I said. Earlier in the uh, late March into April, I'm going to be going to Baltimore, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, Ohio. (laughs) The Steel Belt. (laughs) Yeah, for real. Uh, And Indianapolis, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, where else am I going? <laughs> Kansas I, City. I don't know. And St. Louis. <laughs> it's like all baseball. And Brooklyn. But Brooklyn is sold out. Sorry. If you live in the western port point of the eastern time zone or somewhere in <laughs> yeah. the... If you live somewhere in there, check mm-hmm. local listings. Check local listings. And go out and watch a night of comedy Come for on! God's sake. Come on! Come <laughs> on! All right, Rhea. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, out Jeff. Happy birthday. Th- happy birthday to you too. <laughs> we'll see you on August twelfth. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Bye.